Grupo A. Um, Uruguay and Russia. I think the host nation was given a dose of reality. Um, they came down from the high of thumping defeats over Saudi Arabia and Egypt, and they come up. They came up against a team that has not been great in this tournament so far. But we always knew that they looked like they were on the verge of improving. You know, one nil defeats to Egypt and Saudi Arabia, and then a three nil defeat of Russia. That's that is so Uruguay. <laughs> but even after Uruguay picked off, you know, bland notches, bland victories against Saudi Arabia and Egypt, I just felt that they looked like a team that was always on the verge of getting better and better as the tournament goes on. And in the post-match after Russia, Uruguay, um, Suarez says that we're a team that has gotten better. We're going to continue to get better. Uruguay is the kind of side that grows into a tournament. Uh, in fact, when they beat Egypt in their opening match, I believe it was the first time Uruguay had won their World Cup opening match since 1970. So that tells you all you need to know about them. But Uruguay is a side that looks like, of all the seven or eight countries who can win this tournament, they're the, they're the most difficult ones to really assess because you don't quite know what you're going to get with them. But in this game, we finally had uh, Cavani get on the score sheet. Uh, I believe Diego Laxalt also scored. It's great to see some new blood for Uruguay scoring. Uh, Suarez threw the, the free kick. My dad actually called that. When, when, when Uruguay was awarded the free kick on the edge of the box in the first half, my dad said Suarez will score this, and he did. He tucked it into the lower right-hand corner. Russian wall kind of gave him a little bit of space, but um, there wasn't really much Igor Akinfeyev could do about it. And then Russia getting a man sent off, playing with 10 men for the rest of the game. Would they have still lost the match? If they didn't play with 10 men, yes, I think they would have because Uruguay just put on a clinic here and it was a little bit of humble pie for uh, Russia here. And it, like I said, it was a little do bit of a dose of reality. They came up against a team that is leagues and leagues ahead of Saudi Arabia and Egypt uh, and a team that can potentially go on a deep run in this tournament. Um, I think, personally, if, if things go really well for Uruguay, I think they can win it. But that's another, that's another topic. Uh, the host nation, they should still be happy they're through to the round of 16. They avoided a South Africa 2010 type of event. And look, they still have quality players. Cheryshev, I hope he doesn't feel down after scoring that own goal. He has, what, three goals in this tournament so far? I'm waiting to see Dmitry Smolov get on the score sheet. I hope he does. Maybe... Uh, Samadov. Um, interested to see what Gazinski still does. He scored the opener for Russia in that in that first match. So Russia has they have some quality players. They can beat since they're going up against a team in Portugal that tends to struggle with breaking defenses down. Uh, and Portugal's a team that very much plays to the level of their opponent. One one draw with Iran three draws in the Euro 2016 group stage. It's not inconceivable that Russia could squeak by there maybe through like a 1-0 a, a or maybe through a penalty shootout. I mean, Portugal is not... Um, they're, they're one of those teams that can beat anybody on their best day, but they can lose to almost anybody on their worst day. Um, they're not a high-scoring team, usually, Portugal. Uh, if you want to count CR7's hat trick against Spain, then go right ahead. But, you know, Russia, they still have a path forward. They shouldn't get discouraged from this loss because they were coming up against a team that kind of tricked people, you know, kind of tricked people into thinking that they were going to underwhelm in this tournament. And they still could. Uruguay could go out in the round of 16 to Portugal. They could. That's actually going to be one of the more, I already know, I already know that's going to be one of the more Difficult round of 16 matches to call. Uruguay versus Portugal. I give the slight edge to Uruguay, like I said yesterday. Slight, slight edge. 
Um, but in Russia's case, I mean, they've had a stellar start to this this tournament. 5 0 win over, over Saudi Arabia, 3 1 over Egypt. This, you know, train of euphoria came to a screeching, not a halt against Uruguay, even though it was a 3 0, sort of a heavy defeat, but it, it came to a bump along the tracks, right? So it all depends on how they perform in the round of 16 game. If they get thumped out of the tournament, that's different. If they barely go out to Portugal, let's say they lose 1-0 or 2-1, or they lose on penalties, then they can hold their heads up high. Uh, but I thought in this match, Russia was just outperformed in nearly every area of the pitch. They had a few moments where they had Uruguay in the back foot playing defense. But, you know, Uruguay hasn't conceded a single goal in this group. You say, well, Saudi Arabia and Egypt are the opposition. Now, yeah, Uruguay is going to face a, a, a stiffer test once they get to the knockout rounds. But, um, you know, Russia didn't lay down for, for Uruguay in this game. Uh, they, were, they were still outmatched. They were, they're still noticeably the, wor the, the, worst, the worst team compared to Uruguay. But they didn't. Um, they, went, they went out in a blaze of glory. And for Saudi Arabia, Egypt, look, um, I thought this match was going to be a draw. And it was until Saudi scored in stoppage time. So Saudi Arabia, the first Arab country to, to pick up a victory in this tournament, congratulations. Um, they finished third in the group. Saudi Arabia does leave home with their first World Cup victory since 1994. Egypt um, finishes bottom of the group. Uh, it was just a really sad way to go out because, you know, to concede an extra time with one of the last few kicks of the game, it was it was a sucker punch because I thought we were going to get something out of this, especially in the first half where Assam El Hadari, our 45-year-old goalkeeper, one of the, the very last remaining vestige, or at least one of them, of the um, the teams that won the, 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 the trinity of African Cup of Nations in, from 2006 to 2010, he became the oldest goalkeeper, the, old, no, the oldest player ever. The oldest player ever in the history of the World Cup was a 45-year-old Egyptian man. And he came up big. He made a big penalty stay, save um, towards the end of the first half for us. And then, stupidly enough, we gave away another foul in the box. You know, whether or not it's a penalty, I, have, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not an expert on that. But... um. Yeah, then Saudi converted it, went into the half at 1-1. We gave away two penalties in the last five minutes of the game when our goalkeeper, who is nearing middle age, bailed us out, and we give him another penalty, and they equalize. And then the second half, Saudi Arabia had like 68% of the possession. Egypt looked like they were content to play for the draw. I really don't like this anti-football setup manager Hector Cooper has us under. We play anti-football defense, and then we play long balls up to uh, Trezeguet and Salah, hoping they get on the end of it and uh, just you know hope for the best. Uh, but he's gone. Cooper's gone. I say bye-bye. Say, well, he got you to the World Cup. No, he didn't get us to the World Cup. Mohamed Salah got us to the World Cup. He played a role in 100% of Egypt's goals, whether scoring them himself or, or assisting them or being part of that final link-up play in the build-up to the goal. He, he played a role in every single one of Egypt's goal, goals in the final round of qualifying. I don't, uh, I don't give Hector Cooper credit for, for qualifying. I don't. And I said, I felt that entering this tournament, we were low-key one of the worst teams maybe bottom three i think we, i think we are i think we are one of the bottom three worst teams in this tournament we could finish 32nd out of 32nd but i think tunisia will beat panama and panama has a worse goal difference so maybe we'll finish ahead of panama maybe we'll finish ahead of south korea because germany will most likely beat south korea so maybe we'll finish in 30th or 29th if we're lucky but I think we need to we need to um, start all over again. We need a new game plan. We need to uh, 
really assess what went wrong. We need to find a manager that can bring out the best in our side. I hope if Herv Renard leaves, leaves Morocco, he comes to us. But we need a good manager. Um, Hector Cooper, I admire what he did for Valencia back in 2000, 2001. But um, he's not, he wasn't the right fit for the Egyptian national team. And I felt he should have left after we qualified. Um, but it's just sad because we finished the group with, with three losses. And, you know, but I'm glad I didn't have to wait any longer to watch my country play in a World Cup for the first time. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm going to be 25 next month. Uh, I've never seen Egypt play in a World Cup, and I did three times in the last week. So I'm really thankful for that. And uh, we just have to focus, focus one step at a time. We need a different blueprint. We need to go back to the drawing board, focus on qualifying for the 2019 African Cup of Nations. We should qualify because I think it's expanded to 24 teams. If we don't, then we're really in big trouble. Um, but, you know, Qatar 2022 is, is more than four years from now. We're talking about winter of 2022. So, yeah, you know, we, we have to look forward, focus on, on qualifying, uh, fixing our domestic program, um, and getting a manager who has a more, a more positive, uh, that can input a more positive identity for this team. That doesn't include just holding on for dear life and uh, hoof, playing hoofball up to uh, Mo Salah and to Trezeguet and to a lesser extent, uh, Abdullah Saeed. Um, really wanted to finish this tournament with something. But, I mean, that's, that's life. You have to go through lows in order to get to the highs. And you have to go through highs to get to the lows. So, you know, I think that if we do that, if Salah stays with the team, if we can fix numerous things, we can get back to the World Cup in 2022, and then we can, we can get past the group stage. I think we, we will get past the group stage one day. You know, um, When you have a player like Salah and, and you fix the other pieces that are wrong with your team, anything is possible. So I don't think we have seen the last of Salah in a World Cup for Egypt. I know that there are rumors that he was thinking about leaving the national team because of his meeting with the Chechenian leader, but I don't think it's going to end up happening. It's going to be like a messy type of situation where he says, oh, I'm going to leave the national team after the Copa America centenario, and then he comes back. You know, He's 25 years old. He's 26. 20, he just turned 26. Mohamed Salah. He's a, barely a year old, 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 older than me. Um, he's, he's going to stick around. We need him. And honestly, at the end of the day, I hope we just, I hope we just do it what we did in the early two thousands and really build for towards a, a second golden generation. Because the two thousand and six to two thousand and ten team, they didn't get to a World Cup, and that team would, that team would 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 pull a seven one on this current Egyptian team. I'm sorry, I'm going to use. My Brazilian audience, I'm going to use the 7 1 meme. Um, but I just wish we got to the World Cup back then. I really did wish we got to the World Cup back then because we, we really could have done something. We really could have, could have done something big. Uh, but in this, you know, that's, that's football for you. That's football for you. This, this group of players. This is probably the worst Egyptian national team. I said previously in 15 years, I think in about 25 years now, the worst Egyptian national team since like the early 90s, um, they still got to the World Cup. They still got to the World Cup, these guys. So thank you so much for that. Thanks. I really did. <laughs> it was about time. I was getting worried that it would never happen. Um... And let's just try to get to 2022 and see what happens.